All right, so this video is going to cover the topic analysis for AQA A-Level Chem Paper 3. So why do I make these videos? The whole point is that you start studying smarter. You need to understand that your revision time is incredibly precious, right? You're most likely doing three, sometimes four subjects. I did chem, bio, and maths. They take up an insane amount of time, okay? So you need to know where you want to focus. Remember, exams are like a game. If you learn the rules to the game, you master the game. The rules are in the examiner's report, specification, mark scheme, stuff like that, okay? But I've gone one step further. So which topics should you focus on to improve your chance of getting an A or an A star? So hopefully you're familiar with paper one, paper two for chemistry, already done, link in the description. If you're not, I'll explain everything throughout the video. But it's really important to understand, I am not a psychic wizard master guru. I don't know what's gonna happen, I can't predict the future. This is just looking for patterns, analyzing the mark schemes, stuff like that, okay? All right, cool. With that out of the way, let's look at the contents of this video. What are you gonna learn? Why are you here? So we're gonna take a look at a required practicals one to 12 summary real quick. I went into it a lot more detail in my paper three 2023 video. So check that out if you're bothered. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna skim through it, let you pause it, take your notes, do all that good stuff. I'll highlight a couple points, but apart from that, I'm gonna skim through. Topic analysis, paper three MCQs. Okay, so this is where paper three is kind of unique because there are 30 marks for each paper which are allocated to multiple choice questions. And because they're all just one mark, this varies a lot. So we'll look at that as well. Then we're gonna look at, look at the core questions. Now I've just called them the core questions, but it's essentially section A. So, you know, there's normally five, six questions which are all to do with synoptic, which just means like a jumble of all the content in the specification together, linked together, and required practicals. Okay, so this is this is what the core questions are gonna be. We'll take a look at that. Then we'll do a summary table right near the end where you're hopefully familiar with this, where I look at frequency, marks per paper, stuff like that. And this is really where you wanna pay attention. If you don't care about anything else, skip forward to this point and take note of which topics you should focus on. And then lastly, we're gonna look at an analysis of the core and the MCQ questions all together. We're gonna to look at grade boundaries and we're also gonna look at a split of what percentage of paper three has been physical, organic, and inorganic. So let's go. Right, required practical one to four. As I said, I'm gonna skim through this crazy fast. So pause the video if you need to take notes. A lot of this information was taken from a mixture of the specification and the AQA practical handbook. Honestly, a lifesaver. Check it out. If you haven't, just Google AQA A-Level Chem practical handbook and you should find it. The main points I wanna emphasize here, required practical two and required practical three. For this purposes of A-level, I have combined energetics and thermodynamics and I have combined kinetics and rate equations. And that is consistent throughout the entirety of paper three. The reason for this is because there is a lot of synoptic crossover naturally being paper three between these two topics. So you've got energetics year one, then you have thermodynamics year two, kinetics year one, rate equations year two. They're sort of like branches. They should sort of just be called like Energetics 1, Energetics 2, Kinetics 1, Kinetics 2, or something like that, because they feed on from one another, okay? And in these required practicals 2 and 3, they can ask you different knowledge questions based on thermodynamics, even though technically this is a required practical under the energetics topic. So just keep that in mind, okay? The same thing for required practical 4. I've grouped group two and group seven, okay? Because there are some simple test tube reaction questions that are a mixture of all of them. All right, so just keep that in mind. So that's practicals one to four out of the way. Let's look at five to eight. There is nothing crazy going on here apart from with required practical seven. Keep in mind again, there are stuff to do with kinetics. Okay, so I group this together under the rate equations and kinetics topic. Nine to 12, nothing crazy here, okay? This is slightly grouped just because there's a bit of overlap between transition metals and reactions of aqueous ions, but for the most part, it's reactions of aqueous ions, all right? So as I said, I skim through this super fast, feel free to pause and check it out, take some notes, whatever you gotta do. Let's take a look at the MCQ questions for 2017 to 2023. So if you're not aware, I've sort of already covered it in this video, but each paper three has 30 marks up for grabs for multiple choice questions. So that's seven papers times 30, there's gonna be 210 marks here, okay? Now, all of the marks aren't covered on this graph right here. There's a cutoff point where I just excluded everything that was below five marks across the seven years for the purposes of this video. 
All right, cool. So hopefully that's all good. Now, if you're not familiar with this, y-axis is the number of marks that this topic received. And then on the x-axis, you have the respective topics, which each column is just being, you know, its own topic, right? Pretty simple. So king right here is transition metals. Then we have acids and bases. These two are by far the highest. And these were also the highest among paper one as well. So yeah, keep that in mind. Paper one, paper three, quite a lot of overlap here with the multiple choice questions. Then we have amount of substance, bonding, polymers, rate equations, group seven, amino acids, carboxylic acids, atomic structure, alcohols, energetics, and it dips off a bit. So just keep that in mind that even though I have analyzed the MCQs, it's a lot more important to focus on the core questions because that makes up 60 out of the 90 marks because there's 90 marks total in paper three. So you definitely want to focus on the core questions more than the MCQs, but it doesn't hurt to know which ones have come up the most. Okay, so I'd say a lot of this work you're going to be doing from paper one anyway. Transition metals, acids and bases, amount of substance. You should have mastered that through your paper one revision, right? And then from here, you have some rate equations and kinetics from paper two, stuff like that. Okay, so MCQ, I'm not going to cover too much. It's not really that relevant. We'll look at towards the end of the video, a combination of the core questions and the MCQs just to see how things look overall. So let's look at the core question. So this is across the seven years again, 2017 to 2023. If you wanna see what it looked like previously, I go into a lot more detail in my paper three 2023 video. So again, check that out. Now, first and second topic here, energetics and thermodynamics. That's what this says, dot, 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 is thermodynamics. And then rate equations and kinetics. So these are joint topics for the purposes of paper three. The reason for this is there was just so much overlap, guys. It just made so much more sense to group the two topics together. You can learn them in conjunction. Energetics and kinetics are really simple year 12 topics. Just bang them out and then move on to the more complicated thermodynamics and rate equations. Now, for the purposes of going back here to required practical two and three, there's a lot of rate equations and thermodynamics knowledge in these two required practicals. So if they do come up, just keep that in mind. That is also another reason why I have grouped them together here. Now on from there, we have transition metals and carboxylic acids and derivatives. These are both joint third place right here. Then we have amount of substance, acids and bases, electropotentials, alcohols, amino acids, proteins, and DNA. And then it sort of trickles down here. Okay, and as before, there are topics past here, but for the sake of this video, like why do I, why do I care about anything that's less than four marks under seven years of papers? Okay, it just doesn't make sense. Now, if you watch my paper two 2024 video, you'll know that energetics was like all the way down here at like 10 marks and then it received 12 marks in paper two and that sort of popped it up uh, paper two 2023 right so that popped it up the leaderboard so something could happen just like that for paper three so keep that in mind maybe you'll get a required practical on chromatography or something like that okay so just keep that in mind now that's actually perfect mentioning chromatography here so this is our core questions paper three 2023 so this right here, first place surprised me quite a bit. Amino acids, proteins, and DNA. So this, this paper was very amino acids heavy, right? And it also had chromatography knowledge from the amino acids, proteins, and DNA topic. So it wasn't just the chromatography topic, but this topic also in includes chromatography. Okay, so mentioning stuff like chromatography here, standalone, uh, right here doesn't really have many marks allocated to it but there's quite a bit of crossover so just keep that in mind this also contains some chromatography and then we had carboxylic acids and derivatives alcohols amount of substance bonding reactions of aqueous ions acids and bases and energetics and thermodynamics so yeah that's the core questions of 2023 if you want to see a breakdown of each individual year's paper so 2017 2018 etc check out the previous video Let's look at all questions, paper three, 2023. So this is the core questions and the MCQ questions, okay? And if you're not familiar with this, this red dashed box right here, this just highlights that if you got 100% in these topics right here, you would have got an A, okay? As we can see, these are our grade boundaries over here. This is out of 90 marks, remember guys, for paper three. So an A was 63 marks or 70%, okay? And here, this is 67. So I've just included, if you got 100% in these topics, you would have got an A, okay? You can obviously expand it to jump up to an A star, drop it down for a B, etc. But the principle here is that you can focus on overarching topics that come up the most, and this is where you're gonna snag majority of your marks, okay? So this year, like I said, guys, a bit of a curveball with the amino acids, proteins, and DNA. 
Next up, we have carboxylic acids and derivatives, amount of substance, bonding, alcohols, acids and bases, reactions of aqueous ions. Okay, so looking at a paper one year on its own is not really helpful. What you need to do is look for patterns. Okay, you need to look at what topics come up the most. So if we were to look at these questions right here and we were to match some of the top topics for this paper, it would fall under a lot of these top topics within all three years. And that's what we're going to look at now, the summary table. Okay, and then we'll look at the grade boundaries across all the years, just so you guys can have a deeper look at what's involved. So here on this column right here, these are all the topics that I would focus on for paper three. Obviously, you want to start near the top and I'll jump into my reasoning behind that in a second. This is not all the topics. Obviously, in paper three, if you guys weren't aware, you can get tested on every single topic in the specification. So this is clearly not all of that. I've just highlighted the ones that I would focus on to begin with. OK, so now, as you can see up here, energetics and thermodynamics. This is just the core questions. Remember, OK? Just the core first five to six questions that come up with the short answer responses, the required practical synoptic knowledge. This does not incorporate the MCQs just because they're only one mark each. It was sort of pointless to look at their frequency because they could just skew that like crazy. OK, we'll look at that in a second. All right, so let's break this down. Obviously, the two kings here are energetics and thermodynamics, rate equations and kinetics. This is going to help you out so much with paper one, this one right here, and also maybe some energetics if they incorporate that into paper two, like they did in 2023 last year, but I don't really see that happening again anytime soon. And this rate equations and kinetics is going to help you so much with paper two. Okay, so doing these for paper three is going to help you with paper one and two, just naturally. All right, transition metals is going to help you a ton with paper one because that comes up like crazy. Carboxylic acids and derivatives, one of the top ranking topics for paper two. So revising that for paper three is a no brainer. Amount of substance has come up seven times. So if I didn't talk about this previously, if you, if you haven't seen any of my videos, this just tells you how many times that topic came up across the years. So if it came up in every single paper, that's a seven right here. If it came up in five of the seven papers, that's a five right here. Hopefully that makes sense. And this average marks per paper is just this number, the total marks divided by this. OK, that gives us this average marks per paper that it appeared in. So going back to that, then amount of substance came up seven times, right? This is fundamental to every single paper in chemistry. So amount of substance is probably my most favorite topic in terms of the amount of return on investment you get if you master it. It's come up every single paper three. And this is just the core questions, not to mention the MCQs. And it's come up pretty much every single time in paper one and two as well. OK, so definitely focus on this big time, even though it hasn't received the most marks. It got a 4.9 average marks. It is super important. So focus there, 100 percent focus on amount of substance. All right. <laughs> if, you, if it wasn't clear, focus on this guy. All right. Then acids and bases. This is super, super big topic for paper one. So naturally, it's good to practice it. Electro potentials is also huge for paper one. Not as big as uh, acids and bases, amount of substance, transition metals and stuff like that and thermodynamics, but it's huge nonetheless. And also there's a required practical for it that can pop up. So it's good to know. All right. All these ones beyond there, I would say are just good to learn. They're good to learn for paper two. Uh, a lot of these little organic tr topics that trickle in there. Really good to learn. You've got group seven, which is just uh, I would say is the second best to learn after transition metals for the inorganics topic, but that's just me. But yeah, pause this video. I don't care how you use this table. Take advantage of it. Again, I'm not a psychic. I can't predict what's going to come up in 2024. I'm just analyzing the topics, looking at the papers and thinking, where would I focus my time? Because I don't want to be studying 24 seven. That's the last thing I want to do. So screenshot this, send it to your mates. Hopefully it can help them out with chemistry. Let's take a quick look at this final chart here. OK, so this is the core and the multiple choice question. So every single mark up for grabs for paper three. How is it broken down? Energetics and thermodynamics naturally and rate equations and kinetics. These are naturally top one and two just because they're joint topics. They heavily favor required practical two, three. And I believe was it seven? I think it was seven. Yep. OK, so just keep that in mind. They heavily favor them. And then from there, we have transition metals, carboxylic acids, acids and bases, amount of substance, electro potentials. These are all huge in paper one. So it naturally makes sense to stack them. And you have a bunch of organics down here. So what's this up here? This this pie chart, this donut chart. This is new to my videos. I'm going to take a look at doing this more often. 
um, especially if I did an overall A-level chemistry or A-level biology, like all paper one, two, and three analysis, to break it down for you, essentially this says that 49% of the marks came from physical chem, which can you can kind of see here, a lot of these are physical, right? And then 34%, so roughly a third came from organic, and then only 17% came from inorganic, okay? Now 17% from inorganic, a lot of that was transition metals. So keep that in mind, that's a breakdown of the three different types of chemistry. So if I was you, I'd focus on physical. Obviously you can't avoid organic because of paper two, but I'd say focus on physical. That's where you're gonna get a lot of your marks. This table right over here is just sort of for you guys to check out, see what the grain boundaries are like. So if you're thinking, oh, I only need a B, what, what do I need for paper three? Or I'm, you know, I'm going all out for an A star. What do I need here? As you can see, the grade boundaries kind of bumped in 2023. Um, I'm assuming that 2022 had a lot of higher grades. I think I saw an announcement that there was a lot more A stars than they'd been for years and years. So they probably bumped up the grade boundaries again since then. I honestly don't really know how these grade boundaries work. But yeah, 63 out of 90 for an A this year. Not too bad. I expect it to be around the same for 2024, guys. Around low 60s would be my guess. It was a really hard paper, high 50s, but there we go. I really hope you found this video helpful. It took me an insane amount of time to analyze all these papers and do all these charts and stuff. So if you did find it helpful, like the video, share it with your mates, subscribe for future videos. All the best in your upcoming exams and revision, guys. Until next time, peace.